it. Don't drink it. Yeah. 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 My name is Todd Carlton. I'm Senior Regional Director for Ducks Unlimited here in Missouri. And it's my, it's my pleasure to welcome everybody here today. It's a great day to honor a great man. So let's get started with this. Again, we're here to dedicate this wetland project in tribute to John R. Johnny Bells and thank the major donors and supporters who have helped make this project and projects like it possible throughout Missouri and North America. Today, we celebrate many things, partnerships, our conservation mission, our opportunity to leave a legacy, and an individual who truly has made a lasting impact on the Ducks Unlimited Conservation Mission. Before we go any further, I would be remiss if I didn't take this time to recognize, obviously, the family. Um, Libby, there's two Libby's. <laughs> Libby one and Libby two. So, Elizabeth, thank you for coming out. Hope your trip was great, and hope your time here today, and hope you enjoy this. So in honor of your husband. Thank you. And then Hank and Libby, we got two of the three kids here and their family. So, and then the, I believe the other one we're going to be, sorry. Uh, we're going to be recording this so that the rest of the family who couldn't make it could, could enjoy it also. So I know there's tons of, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife staff, DU staff, DU volunteers, longtime friends of Johnny here today to, to obviously to honor him. And, I, you know, you guys have been shaking hands all across, uh, all, all around the area this morning. So, again, welcome. So, um, like I say, it's a great day. One of the things that I, I was telling the family and telling Hank while ago, um, I was listening to the radio up here. It was a short night, had an event last night down in Monette. On the way up here, I had the radio crank pretty good to stay awake. You know, the one of the songs that I heard was, do what you love and love what you do. And I told Hank, I mean, I, that, you know, knowing Johnny as long as I did, or have, uh, that was Johnny to the T. So, um, a lot of people have made significant contributions to DU's mission of wetland conservation and continue to assist us, or in helping us to obtain our vision of, a vision of full skies of waterfowl today tomorrow and forever and it's through people like that that make a contribution that enable us to do what we do today johnny always loved to say and he he would come up and ask to say the blessing before any banquet and I would like to, or if we could, gentlemen, kindly remove your hats. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. The beautiful day that we have today. Thank you for the rain we've received this week. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you to honor a great man. A man that sets to the right of you right now. A man that dedicated his life to his family, to you, and to stewardship of conservation. To further what you've created, to help us 
renew, update, and make better everything that you created. Father, be with everybody here today. Thank you for the safe travel that we've received in getting here to honor a great fellow, a great man, a great father, and a great steward. And all of this we ask in your most precious name. Amen. Amen. Would also like to recognize a gentleman that's here with us today, Nathan Hope. Nathan is going to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Nathan is a new director of development for Ducks Unlimited for East Missouri and for Southern Illinois. So, welcome. Thanks. Appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Pleasure to meet you all. Please rise and, uh, and face the flag as we start the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. <clears throat> We're going to keep this short. It's, it's cool. There's a uh, Obviously, restrooms to over to our left. There's coffee and donuts in the headquarters. But I'd like for Mr. Mike Shannon to come forward. Mike is a 24-year veteran of, and a senior regional biologist for Ducks Unlimited out of the Great Lakes Regional Atlantic Region Office to come forward and tell us a little bit about the project here at Clarence Canyon. Thank you, Todd. Well, I appreciate everybody being here today. Um, we have the opportunity to come out first off and celebrate our volunteers. Um, Johnny, you know, his dedication to Ducks Unlimited. Um, and, and really get out in the field and see what that kind of dedication does to the resource. Uh, to tell you a little bit about the project, you know, here a few years ago, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service staff at the refuge contacted Ducks Unlimited because there's a, it's a great refuge here. It's a great uh, wetland area. It attracts a lot of ducks. But the, it was aging, you know, the infrastructure that's out there um, has a certain lifespan, I guess you could say, and it was past that lifespan, and the refuge was having a really hard time managing their water, putting that habitat out there that the ducks need every year. And so they came to Ducks Unlimited and, and said, well, you know, what can we do to improve that? And so, you know, biologists with Ducks Unlimited, engineers with Ducks Unlimited went out here, and uh, the first thing, obviously, was they had an old, old pump station that was very unreliable. Um, and it wasn't putting a lot of water where they needed it. And so Ducks Unlimited was able to design a new uh, uh, pump station that could put water out there in these wetlands. Um, you know, here in a little bit, I'll introduce Floyd Trootkin, the, uh, re the refuge manager, and he can tell you in more detail what, how valuable that pump is to their operation. But basically, when we go out on the refuge today and look at it, none of that water would be there without that pump station. You know? so, so Ducks Unlimited, our staff kind of uh, analyzed the situation and designed a pump station that could, that could put that water, put that habitat out there for those ducks. Um, we wrote a NACA grant that brought a million dollars of Fish and Wildlife Service money to the project, but we couldn't have done that without the donations. That takes a lot of match, non-federal match, to get that million dollars. And so Ducks Unlimited, we couldn't have written that, that uh, grant and got that money without our generous supporters helping us. Because again, that's, that's what starts that whole process is that private money uh, that Ducks, Ducks Unlimited donors provide for us allows us to leverage that and bring that other million dollars in. So we had that million dollars of knocking money. The Fish and Wildlife Service put some additional money in there. Again, we had all our generous donors helping us. Um, you know, we were able to redo that pump station, redo some of the other water delivery systems, uh, levees and stuff like that, that allow the refuge staff to go out there and put that habitat on the ground. So again, um, I thank the donors for what they've done. Um, but I also want to thank the refuge staff for their hard work because none of it would happen without their, first off, their initiative to say, hey, we can make this better. And reaching out their partnership to Ducks Unlimited has just been huge. So, uh, again, I'll, I'll turn it over to Floyd Trutkin, the uh, refuge manager, because he could give you the, the down and dirty for, you know, what the refuge can do, how many ducks are here, and that kind of thing. So, Floyd? <clears throat> thank you, Mike. <clears throat> I 
Well, I, I wanted to welcome you to Clarence Cannon Wildlife Refuge. Uh, my name is Floyd Trick and I'm the project leader uh, here at the refuge. We mentioned the refreshments, a couple housekeeping things. Please take advantage of that. Uh, I, I don't need a, five boxes of donuts on Monday. Uh, as, one, one more thing is this, uh, after this, when we go out on some tours, and, if, and you're more than welcome to drive around on your own, we do have a heavy construction project, dirt construction project on the east end of the refuge. Uh, so be mindful of that. Uh, big big four-wheel drive tractors and scrapers, and, and you always got to yield to a four-wheel drive tractor. So be mindful of that, please. This, this really is a spectacular time of year to be out here, and I'm glad that we can hold this event. It, it's been a long time in the making. Uh, I didn't get the pleasure of meeting Johnny Bells before he passed. Uh, but yesterday, as I was driving around with Mike and, and Mark, uh, I learned a little bit about your husband and your father. Mark commented on how much Johnny loved to laugh and pull a good trick on him in particular. Uh, but he also liked to, liked to get a joke pulled on him now and then. Yesterday, as we drove around looking at the pump station and the ducks and the geese and the deer and everything that was out there, I just couldn't help but feel like Johnny was in the pickup truck with us laughing and telling tall tales about duck hunting and, and all the work that he had did through his career. I hope for today for the Bells family and all his DU colleagues that we can do justice to you all in showing you how his legacy and DU's work really fits hand in glove with our mission of migratory waterfowl. So before I go on real quick, I wanted to recognize the staff here. Uh, we are a very small staff here at the refuge, but it, it's critically important all the work that they do that we're going to see you know, later as we go out. Christina Hayes, she's in the back. Christina is our station administrative assistant. Uh, she keeps the electricity paid for that pump station, <laughs> which is important for a pump station. And in fact, she keeps all the bills paid, including my paycheck and everybody. So, uh, And when you walk into that office and visitor center on any given day, she's the first point of contact. She's the one that answers your questions and hands your brochures and tells you where to go see ducks and pelicans and everything else. So, uh, Jared Nance, he's also in the back. Raise your hand. <laughs> uh, Jared's a deputy project leader here, and Jared's also our water manager here at the refuge. He coordinates where that pump station water goes. Yeah, give him a round of applause. <laughs> water is critical when you're in a historic drought, like we are right now. He's also a big, big part of, of getting habitat ready during the summer. Um, you know, you can put water on a field, but if ducks can't find seeds, they can't get through the rank vegetation, it's, you all know, that just doesn't work very well. Last but certainly not least, uh, Alan Logman. Alan's in the back there too. Alan's our maintenance mechanic and equipment operator. Alan, through his career, has learned and paid attention. The recipe, if you will, of how to make great duck habitat. He's our go-to for mo almost everything that happens across the, the three refuges that I manage. And as you drive around today, uh, all the successes and wonderful things you see out there, a majority of those are because of Alan's hard work. Alan's retiring this month. Hope I didn't let the cat, cat out of the bag, Alan. <laughs> but he has been a great teacher and a mentor to all of us. And Alan, I say thank you for that. So that's our staff. Can you believe it? Them and me. Pretty, pretty small. But um, This pump station completed in 2019, and I, I do hope you'll get to uh, take some time and go down and, and look at it. It served us very, very well. Uh, many of you are wetland managers or biologists, uh, e either professionally or on your own little piece of duck heaven on your property, or, or maybe you have a lease. We talked about driving around the war stories that all of us have on, on pumping wetlands and trying to get water out across the land. This refuge was no different, has been no different. Uh, everything from ornery old open cab tractors and crucifoli pumps to, to diesel engines that were hand-me-downs when we got them. They'd seen better days 20 years ago. Um, 
Those diesel diesel engines that ran those pumps, I swear, you could check on them. They would be just fine. Five minutes, you'd drive away and a fuel line would break. And and then you lost that day's pump until you, until you came back at the end of the day to check them. So, you know, all those things, that's how we did work, but it wasn't a, an efficient way necessarily. Uh, this pump station that you're going to see today it, uh, uh, complements a second pump station that just came online this year. A Corps of Engineers uh, put in a pump station for us. Uh, it gives us tremendous, tremendous resili resiliency and redundancy in pumping. Even a, even a brand new pump station, a, a four-year-old pump station, things happen. You know, circuit boards, you know, fry or, or something didn't quite get set up right, a parameter or whatever. We now have the redundancy to pump, really, um, uh, as much as we need to pump, even if a station goes down or the creek is a little dry. And that's, that, that is tremendous for us. Ducks don't wait for a circuit board that's four weeks on back order. You know, they, they need water when they get here. Um, they, they need good habitat, and, and this pump station is, is helping us get there. It has helped us get there. Um, so on behalf, I'll, I'll wrap this up. On behalf of the refuge staff and the Fish and Wildlife Service, I, I really give my thanks to our wonderful partner, Ducks Unlimited, and the Bells family. I hope you all will, will take advantage of being out here and look around today or come back any day. We're open 365 days a year and, and really see the fruits of everyone's hard work and labor. Thank you. You know, I will say, uh, I apologize, number one, the popping and cracking. We have a very large event over in Sedalia tonight, and we have two newer systems. This is my backup. And we needed the other system over there to, to handle the load. So uh, when I tested this earlier this week, it was fine. <laughs> so now it's it's popping. And, it's kind of like me this morning, popping and cracking as I get out of the truck. So you know, Johnny had a, a several Johnny. We used to say Johnnyism sayings that you know that he borrowed or would would say from time to time. I'm going to remind everybody of one this morning. And, a, and another one when we close, but conservation without dollars is mere conversation. That was one of his go-tos all the time. So up next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Dennis Drummond. Dennis is our current Missouri Ducks Unlimited State Chairman to come up and say a few words. Dennis and I, he is my partner here in Missouri, along with uh, Trevor Hickman and Jimbo Robinson. And uh, Dennis, come up. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I want to thank everybody for coming out to uh, this beautiful day that we're having. Uh, I just had a couple things I wanted to say. I, I knew Johnny from the state convention at the uh, Lodge of the Four Seasons. Got to visit with him several occasions down there. He was always a character in there. He was, he was, you could tell his passion that was for, uh, for the wetlands and Ducks Unlimited. He, uh, he lived and breathed it in there. And uh, he'll truly be missed by all of us in there that's got to know him over the, the years in there. So he was, uh, he was just a heck of a guy in there. But again, thanks everybody for coming out to, to this. Thank you. Love it, short and to the point. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way, would you? No. Thank you, Dennis. We appreciate you driving across the state this morning to honor Johnny. Up next, I'd like to introduce Miss Tammy Kircher. Tammy is the Region 5 Senior Flyway Vice President. She's on the Board of Directors with Ducks Unlimited. And she, She has driven down from southeast Iowa this morning to say a few words. Tammy? Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for having me here. And, oh, my gosh, what a beautiful drive I had down this morning. A uh, few ducks flying. Um, I want to tell you that I was in Manitoba for a dedication last week, and I took the nets down. So for all you duck hunters, the, the birds are going to be here pretty soon. So, uh, Thanks, Tammy. You're very welcome. So Johnny Bells, I'm sad I did not know him personally. 
but I can tell you it's a name that I've heard a, oh, numerous times uh, in my 40 years as volunteering for Ducks Unlimited um, when I started with the Can Kansas City chapter. I've heard so many Johnny-isms along the way that um, I felt like in my heart I've known him a very long time. So Johnny was a larger-than-life member uh, to the DU family, and for more than 40 years he served as a volunteer but also as a staff member. And his friendship and his fondness for the people and the ducks were a true gift to each one of us. Everybody knows that Johnny was very instrumental in the fight for the Missouri duck stamp back in the 70s. And today we look at these projects that we have because of the million, millions of dollars that that helped create for, for uh, Ducks Unlimited. He was a very highly successful and thought of man on the development team, and I believe he served on staff for 16, 17 years maybe. Um, but he was always the next man up. He was always willing to help the next person be a better development staff member or another team member on the DU staff. But just like Johnny Style, he wasn't hesitant to push up his sleeves and volunteer. Um, he was a past state chairman for Missouri he served as a senior vice president on the development team, and he served as our national secretary for several years. That's the kind of man Johnny Bells was. He got behind what he said. He did what he said. Um, so what an absolutely beautiful and fitting place from, for us to gather this morning and pay tribute to such a wonderful man that will be part of the DU family forever. Thank you. So as Kathy Babcock McCollum comes up, Kathy is our Ducks Unlimited Managing Director of Development and longtime friend and co-worker Johnny Bell. So she grew up knowing Johnny for many, many years, I guess ever since, I mean. About 12. Yeah. We won't say how many years ago that I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh-uh, I wouldn't go in there. Uh -uh. But I will say this, we had the St. Louis Sponsors event this week. We raved, um, together with Great Rivers Habitat. I know there's several board members here from our Great Rivers Habitat Alliance and several board members here today and uh, as our partnership event. And Johnny was a longtime chairman of the St. Louis Sponsors, I believe upwards of 20 years. And uh, we, we raised some serious dollars this week, around $300,000 gross. So he, his impact is still lasting and, and will be there. So Kathy, come on up and say a few words. I'm going to start by saying the first thing I thought of when I drove up here this morning was, wow, would Johnny have loved this? This was his kind of thing. He loved being with donors. He loved getting out in the field and seeing what was going on. And so I'm going to start where he would start, and I'm going to thank everybody who was a part of this. Because as everyone else has said, we can't do this without our donors and partners across the continent to make this happen. Um, as Todd noted, uh, Johnny was a great colleague. He was a better friend. And um, he always liked to tell everybody on the development team that he had known me since I was a kid. And that's true. I met him for the first time when I was still young enough to be expected to call him Mr. Bells. Uh, he came to the house in his DU volunteer role to meet with Dad in his Missouri Department of Conservation role. And the main thing I remember about that first meeting is the twinkle in his eye and that my mom wanted me to be sure to remember my manners. So some 20 years later, our paths crossed again when I joined the DU staff. He was one of the first people to welcome me to the DU family, the DU team. He offered to help me in any way that he could. I thought he was being nice. Um, I came to know he meant it. That's just who he was. Um, like he did for many others on our team, he was a great sounding board. He was a great cheerleader. He would give you a kick in the pants if that's what you really needed. Um, Several years after I came to DU, I took on a management role um, on the development team, and Johnny took to calling me boss lady. Well, I, I don't really think of myself as a, as a boss. Maybe I run interference, but not so much boss. And I said, you know, Johnny, I don't really think of our relationship that way. He said, no, 
But if I'm clear that that's what you are, the rest of the team, almost all of them with more tenure at Ducks Unlimited than you, will go with it. And he was right. Um, you know, when I think about Johnny and I talked to some of my colleagues this week, I think it's a great testament to someone that when we have staff meetings nine years later, we still talk about Johnny at our staff meetings. As recently as August, we talked about the impact that he's had on our team. But there's little things that come to mind also. He had the biggest rearview mirror I have ever seen. <laughs> right? I mean, that thing was massive. Um, he liked to drink his iced tea in a wine glass with a lime. He liked to drink his Pinot Grigio over ice, which I still do. Thank you, Johnny. Um, he had great bow ties. He had a very creative name for his GPS. And he always put a decal on a, on a rental car. Always. Always, always, always. And if you were driving a rental car and you hadn't put a decal on it, he was handing them out to the staff to put a decal on them. Um, one of our newer staff at our, at our August staff meeting said, oh my God, you put a decal on the car. It, you know, are you going to get in trouble with the rental company? I said, well, I, I haven't in the last 10 years and Johnny didn't for the 20 years before that. So I guess we're going to be okay. We'll still be okay. And we'll still be okay. I work with Enterprise, so. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes, that was my father-in-law. I'm just trying to get St. Louis. Like, your oh. father-in-law's here, Trisha. I'm like. That's perfect, because that's <laughs> who we went, went rent with. Yes. So, um, <laughs> So I'm going to kind of uh, close this a little bit thinking about kind of sharing with you when we interview somebody to come on to the development team, we always end the interview with the same question. What are the three things that you want us to remember about your ability to succeed at Ducks Unlimited? And so here's what I think Johnny's answers could have been. He was a brand ambassador for Ducks Unlimited from his first day as a volunteer to his last day as a staff member. Um, the last phone conversation that I had with Johnny was from the hospital asking me to overnight Ducks Unlimited pens to the hospital because he was out of them to hand out to the staff there. And he, he deeply believed in the mission of this organization and was passionate about sharing with others how they could be a part of it. Secondly, he was a fearless fundraiser. He was not afraid to ask to support and invest in this mission and and a consummate donor advocate. He didn't shy away from making the ask. It was a big reason he was a million dollar fundraiser every year. And more importantly than getting the gift, he wanted the donor to feel good about what they were doing. And that was more important to him even sometimes than, than, than getting the gift. Um, his philosophy was if you take care of our volunteers and our donors, they will take care of everything else. And he wasn't wrong. And, and thirdly, he took his role as a mentor very seriously. He set a high bar for his colleagues with his persistence in his work and just the class guy that he was. Um, more than half of the current DU development leadership team, including me, uh, acknowledged Johnny as a very important mentor um, in, in our career. He was always available to brainstorm. He was always available to give you a pep talk. Um, now, he had a competitive streak. He wanted, he wanted to be one of, if not the top director of development every year. And he, and he was still willing to share his tips for, for success so that everyone could be successful. And he wanted to raise one more dollar than everybody else. Um, you know, to me, this project is such a deserved recognition for someone who was an incredibly passionate conservationist, a Ducks Unlimited ambassador, and just a dear, dear friend who still is in my heart. I think about him all the time. There's a group of us at, at work who probably, you know, <laughs> we talk about him a lot and we talk about the impact that he had on our lives. Um, I'm very happy to be a part of this today. So one of the things I would say is if you stay with DU, either as a staff or a volunteer for long enough, the lines between family and friends start to get pretty fuzzy. And um, I would say the DU family is real. Um, I was actually lucky enough to be a part of a duck family a long time before I started a career at Ducks Unlimited. Um, my father was a waterfowl biologist. 
uh, had a long career at Missouri Department of Conservation, uh, followed by a second career at Ducks Unlimited. After my interview at D with DU, I called Dad and I told him, I said, hey, this is your last chance for us to not work for the same company because if they offer me the job, I am taking it. And I, I've told many people, I know some of you have heard me say this, coming to work for Ducks Unlimited was like coming to work for the family firm. And so whether you know me as Ken's daughter or you know him as Kathy's dad, it is my great honor to introduce Ken Babcock. You know, when, when Todd called me and asked me if I'd say a few words, my first question to him was, how many hours do I have? <laughs> uh, because I can take the rest of the day, and I know you, none of us have that much time. And we'd all enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Libby, Libby, or Lizard, which one, which one is it? <laughs> Hank, all of you folks, glad to see you all. And just like Kathy, you all are part of my family, too. You know, Johnny and I, first met in 1975. And uh, I'd like to say that we hit it off perfectly to start with, but we didn't. Because my first encounter with Johnny Bells uh, was actually, it was 1976. And it was the summer before the election for the sales tax that the Department of Conservation had on the ballot. And uh, I got a call from the director, Carl Norn, and Ed Stegner with the Conservation Federation said, we need you to go to a meeting over in St. Louis. Uh, there's a group of duck club owners over there that want to talk to us about this sales tax initiative. I said, sure. So we went, had dinner, had, had lunch, and had a nice time with that. And then basically the message from this group of duck club owners was that uh, we're all about this sales tax. We f support what you're trying to do, but you got to make a promise that you're not ever going to acquire one acre of land in St. Charles County because we've got the ducks taken care of in St. Charles County and we don't need you. <laughs> and I'll let you all guess who the most outspoken yeah. person was in that regard. And, but anyway, we left and it was all, everything was cordial. And about a month later, Mike Nolosky, who some of you folks remember very well, was my boss. And he came down to my office. He said, I went to the State Ducks Unlimited convention this weekend and they elected a new state chairman, and you need to get to know this guy, and you need to get along with him. And I said, who was it? And he said, his name's Johnny Bells. I said, I know him, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get along with him. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, this was, those of you that have duck hunted around Missouri for a long time will remember the mid 70s was the days of the early discussions about converting to steel shot, taking care of the lead poisoning issue. And uh, so, I, I, I talked with Johnny, and I ended up getting invited, I think, to every Ducks Unlimited event in the state that year as a waterfowl biologist to talk about the reason that we needed to convert to a non-toxic shot. And uh, well, we went through that whole period of time, and, and at one of the dinners, Johnny got up and said, you know, if, uh, uh, this is what the 10th DU meeting I've been to this year, and Ken Babcock is always there, I'm going to suggest that next time you don't need to invite but one of us because we could give each other speech. And there was probably a lot of truth to that. But related to that, and, and you know, Johnny respected my views about lead poisoning and the need to go to a non-toxic shot. But he was like everybody else. Uh, you know, lead's pretty hard to beat as some to shoot ducks with. And a little reluctance in that regard. After the season that year, Johnny called me and, and he told me, he said, you know, every year at the end of our duck season, we have cripples around. And uh, we like to go out and remove those cripples. No need to let them sit there and die and suffer. And I said, Johnny, first of all, you need to know that's a violation of federal law. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't do that. But I said, there is a way that you can get those ducks. And I said, but you got to do this. I said, I have a collecting permit and I can, I can collect waterfowl, and I will give you this number, and I want you to collect those birds, but what you gotta do is you gotta bring them to me. 
and I'm going to take them to the to the vet school, and we're going to run leg, we're going to run lead toxicology on those birds. He shot about 75 crippled ducks, brought them in. 85 percent of them had lead poisoning, and from that day on, Johnny was an ambassador <laughs> for going to non-toxic shot. He realized that yeah, that that's a problem because that wasn't the only club in the area that had these cripples at the end of the season. Uh, it's already been mentioned the fact in the role that Johnny played in terms of the state duck stamp. And uh, uh, he got the state council of Ducks Unlimited to run a survey of Ducks Unlimited members. About 85% of them were in favor of the state duck stamp. And uh, then uh, Dale Humberg, who had taken over the best job in the state of Missouri, <laughs> <laughs> did a survey of waterfowl hunters and found about the same thing. And I had the privilege of going to the regulations committee and making the recommendation for the state duck stamp. The regulations committee voted it down with only one yes vote. And that was my boss, who was chief of the wildlife division at that time. But Johnny didn't quit. He didn't give up. He and Jeff Sharan came to meet with the conservation commission the night before their, their monthly meeting about a month later and the very next morning i'll never forget mike malonsky came into my office and he shut the door and he said the commission's going to approve that state duck stamp but johnny and jeff sharan talked them into it they're going to approve it and by golly they did they did and it's already been mentioned that was the start of the state being able to develop and generate a lot of funds that could go for knock a grant we don't have a state duck stamp anymore but we've got a migratory bird permit and a lot of that money still it goes into that kind of work and it's always also very important to understand that at the outset that money was dedicated to go to do habitat conservation in important waterfowl areas in Canada and still today the State Department of Conservation sends money for that kind of work. Johnny and I were very good friends all the way through the time that I worked for the Missouri Department of Conservation, and in 1997, uh, I retired from the Department of Conservation, and I was privileged to go to work for Ducks Unlimited, and I, my first job was working in the Southern Regional Office as the Director of Operations over 22 states, and uh, I got very much involved in, in, in continuing to do the work to, for waterfowl. In fact, I, I told the people at the Department of Conservation when I hit my retirement dinner, I said, this will be the first time in in 27 years that I don't have to apologize for having web feet. I can get, go back and my web feet will serve me well with Ducks Unlimited, and it did. And uh, I don't remember exactly the year, but I got a call from a gentleman at the office in Memphis named Bill Strong. And Bill Strong was over the development staff. And at that time, the development staff was about four people all the way across the whole, whole country. I think Kathy told me last night that it's up to 75 or 80 now in the development staff that uh, that works in that regard. But he called me and he said, we are uh, wanting to start to put development officers in these regional conservation officers. And we've got a guy we'd like to hire. And we said, I think you might know him. His name's Johnny Bells. And I said, well, it's a good thing you didn't ask me that 25 years ago. I'd have probably, I'd have probably told you don't hire him. But I said, you bet your life you send him on down here. We'd love to have Johnny be a part of this team. And I was absolutely delighted when he did that. And you all have heard from others of the success that he's had. I want to close this by saying there was a time, sorry. <laughs> It's already been mentioned, Johnny's role with the St. Louis sponsors. At a time I couldn't afford $200, <laughs> he gave me, damn it, I just missed this tab. He gave me a, a, a blind bag, and I still carry that blind bag every day that I duck <laughs> So. The one thing that I remember that Bill Strong said when he called about Johnny coming to work, he said, of all of the volunteers for Ducks Unlimited across this country, 
There's never been a volunteer that worked harder at raising major gift money for Ducks Unlimited. And he said he not only raises it, but he demonstrates to them how important it is. So I'm pleased to be able to be a part of this. Uh, I wish Johnny was here with us. <laughs> we all do. He'd laugh at me for crying. <laughs> but I don't care. I don't care. And it's my pleasure to yes. turn this microphone over to Hank Bells. And I can tell you that when I first met Hank Bells, he was about this tall. <laughs> and that's, I'm not kidding. And Johnny brought him to the state convention every year. And every year at the state convention, they had a, a youth uh, bid. They'd have two or three items that only the youth could bid on. And Hank Bells could raise his hand faster <laughs> to bid than anybody there. And Johnny went home with no money left because Hank spent it all. <laughs> Hank Bells, the microphone is yours. So, thanks, Mr. Babcock. Um, on behalf of uh, the entire family, uh, those in attendance from the family and those who can't be with us today, I want to thank everybody for joining us. It's a, as everybody said, it's a beautiful fall morning and special. So I'd like to thank uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Ducks Unlimited, uh, all the staff, volunteers, everybody's mentioned today, and for all the hard work that's gone into this project. You know, it's, um, you know, making it possible has taken a lot and we understand that so thank you and a uh, special shout out to Todd Carlton for putting up with me uh, for the past nine years or so it, since we've been trying to do this so it's been a long road we've had the pandemic we've had flooding there have been delays but finally today this is happening so I'm very happy to see that happen for uh, in my father's honor so on the inside cover of a book that uh, pop gave me in 1987 he wrote, and I'm going to have to put some other words in here, too, because it was not politically correct. So he um, <laughs> said, Shooter, a sportsman is a gentleman first, but a sportsman is basically a man or a woman who harvests what they need, whether it's a fish or a bird or any animal or whatever they want for a specific reason. But they never kill anything just to kill it, and they try to preserve the same thing that they harvest from time to time. The book calls this con con conservation. And you'll find these words buried in this book and remember them because they are very profound. My love, Pop. So I think this is a really perfect reflection uh, as to the reason why we're here today. Pop didn't like to be in the limelight. Um, you know, he never wanted to be the center of attention. And if it wasn't helping the ducks, his family or friends, it took a back seat. So, well, Pop, we're here for the ducks, so take a back seat for a few minutes. <laughs> Since 1970, Johnny, as he was all known by his fellow conservation friends, poured his heart and his soul in the wetlands conservation and the ducks. From his involvement with the first Missouri State Duck Stamp, and his passion for being one of the founding members for Wetlands for Kids Day, he never stopped working to ensure that we, as well as future generations, would be able to enjoy the outdoors and God's wonderful wildlife all with the help of a few dollars from you. A journey that spanned nearly 40 years with DU, as people have mentioned, is both a volunteer and a staff member. My family was blessed to learn from him about the outdoors and have shared countless hunts in the blinds here in Missouri and across the country. My first duck was on a cold winter day, December 3rd, 1981, a widgeon hen with a single shot 410 at Raccoon Ranch in the persimmon tree blind standing on my plastic milk crate. <laughs> the water was frozen and he had to break ice four times that day. I remember that moment like it was yesterday. The tears in his eyes said it all. I thought they were tears of happiness, but looking back, there were tears of pain as I ripped through an entire box of shotgun shells. <laughs> I was a horrible shot at nine years old, but I was also freezing my butt off. <laughs> After he went out to get in the boat to get the duck because our lab pitch couldn't get through the ice. I told him, Pop, I should take your old nickname, Killer. He said, no, I've got a better one for you. I'll call you Shooter. <laughs> and that's the name that I proud to carry with me. So as we listen to the calls of the whistles of the wings and watch the flocks of the ducks enter our marshes, fields, 
or other hunting grounds this year, let's remember where they started, where they're headed, and what our connections to these landscapes mean for us, as well as the future generations of outdoorsmen and women. Wetlands project like this one being dedicated this morning will forever honor my father's passion for not only waterfowl, but his love of conservation for us all here today, as well as the next generation. As people have said, the one phrase that ended every correspondence from Pop was from Sterling Adams, who was Dee's president back in 1962. Conservation without money is just conversation. And without the generosity of every penny donated by the supporters of Ducks Unlimited since its founding, we would not be sitting here today. So thank you all for joining. There you go. We'd be so honored if, the, if uh, your sister your, and your stepmom would come up and reveal this. Y'all go ahead and come up. So, we have a uh, plaque here, and it is a temporary plaque that we're going to Let it fall back. There we go. So we have many donors. And in true Johnny Bill's fashion, we have a bunch of legacy greenlings across the bottom. So uh, we appreciate everybody who has contributed towards this project. Uh, this will be a cast in bronze here over the next few weeks. And it will be placed in the permanent monument uh, once we receive that back. So, I hope y'all are happy with that. Uh, it is spectacular. I, and uh, we really uh, are proud of his accomplishments and what he's done and what everybody's been able to do with this. You're welcome. Thank you. So, again... Thanks to U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Ducks Unlimited, and the many donors and contributors on the plaque. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to leave you with one of Johnny's sayings that he told me. He said, what's the five worst words you can hear when you answer the phone call, my phone call? And he said, hello, this is Johnny Bells. <laughs> because you knew he was calling to ask for money. <laughs> but he did it meticulously, and he did it with such passion. And the passion that he exuded is still present today in Ken and, and Hank and the family. You know, all the speakers, Kathy, Dennis, Tammy, we appreciate y'all coming out, everybody coming out today. We'd be so honored if you would, the family's going to lead us um, from here. We're going to go down this straightaway right here into the corner, the other straightaway. And if you see the little break in the trees back to the right of this tree right here, we're going to go right down there. Floyd and his crew, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've been such a blessing to work with here on the facility. But they have picked out a spot that every single person that comes by here has to go by. And it is absolutely gorgeous where we're going to place uh, the final cairn and, and the bronze. And we'd be so honored if everybody would follow the family down and we'll do pictures down there. We've got flags and everything set up. We're going to transfer this down there for pictures. So, again, thanks for coming today. Thanks for what you do for the ducks. And we'll see you down there. <laughs>